it is uh, it's kind of a sad story in there for me. Um, I was always interested in boxing. Come on. I started boxing when I was a kid, and uh, you have to get some butt work done if you want to turn pro. Make sure you don't have AIDS and anything else. Well, my test came back as I had hepatitis C, and that's a no-no. You can't. There's too much blood flying around for that. So they won't give you a license for it. So. I just buried myself into work for years and forgot all about it. And finally they came out with a, with a, I tried one treatment that didn't work. And the doctor actually told me, the, especially the infectious disease doctor, said it was the highest viral load that he's ever seen in his life. So I was on my way out and uh, they came up with this pill that is like 90, 90 something percent effective. And I had a fight with them, with the insurance company that I had insurance with in order to get it because it was $100,000. And I owe a lot of that to my, one of my ex-wives because she's the one that says, get me this medicine. And uh, she got it. And uh, it came back as, as uh, negative. So as soon as that happened, I, uh, I signed back up for boxing again. You know that's just a plus but it's more so it's more so uh, getting to go to these tournaments and, and getting out of town and I mean here I am in Brooklyn New York good excuse to go to Brooklyn I often wonder what it would be like if I started when I was in my 20s again and kept doing it, but I'm just glad I did get to do it at one point in my life. And I will keep boxing until the doctor says you can't box no more. You know, ever since June, when I went to New York, I got hit with a haymaker that like buckled my knees. And um, that 
right there was a concussion that I received and I fought every month after that. So I really had no time to heal from that concussion. I kept getting, I kept getting more concussions and real easy until finally when I got to Atlanta, I, uh, I got hit in the head real light and it was like a black cloud like just came over and just started going like this and pretty soon I can see out of one eye and then all of a sudden I can't see out of none and I was I was down so I got to the hospital waited after the things the doctor said he'd be out he's gonna check it came out and him and the nurse come out and they're just shaking their head I'm going oh no <laughs> what I said, your head's a mess. He goes, you got broken blood vessels all in the front and on both sides of your head. They pulled my license. They pulled my book. They said, you can't fight. And you can't fight for six months. You have to heal. And then the guy who I'm friends with there said, you're done, man. You're all done. He ain't gonna fight no more. Um, and uh, the one thing he did say to me that was stuck in my mind all the time, he said, well, at least you and I want your sword in your hand. I always remember that. I'm still training every day because it's just a natural habit I have formed. And uh, it's, uh, it's a little different, a little different. But I just continue on like nothing ever stopped. He's a boxer, and that guy works out like a boxer. He's religious about it, um, a fanatic about it. Uh, it's the air he breathes. Um, he doesn't miss a day. He can be passing kidney stones, and he's still doing the workout. Uh, runs a mile for every year that he has lived upon the planet every birthday week. That's pretty incredible. Still out here and it's 90 degrees out. I'm in a full body suit of sweat because today is when I hit, uh, I do 20 rounds on the back. And uh, it's like, why do you do 20 rounds? You only fight three. I don't know. It's just like, well, why would you stop at three rounds? Because that's all you fight is three rounds. If you really want something really, really bad and you put your mind to it, I really believe that anybody, anybody could do, do what they want to do. But you have to dig really deep from within and no excuses. That's all it is. Just do it.